Ambulance Paramedics, saving lives in our communities. The State of Fire and Emergency Services in the nation's capital, D.C. public safety agencies have faced blistering criticism for the past several years for slow response times and failure in patient care, but the woman running point on reforms to emergency medical service announced this week that she'd be stepping down from the job, and she says the city's failure to make meaningful changes is putting lives in danger. She joins us in the studio. Dr. Juliet Sassi is the outgoing medical director of the D.C. Fire and Emergency Medical Services Department. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Dr. Sassi, in your resignation letter, which you can find a link to on our website, kojoshow.org, you laid out a whole host of reasons for why you're stepping away from this department. But why did you feel it was necessary to resign in such a public way? It wasn't intended to be public. The letter was written to the deputy mayor, um, to the mayor, through the deputy mayor. Um, so the public nature of this was, was not the intent. Yet you have no reluctance at this point, now that it has been made public, to speak out. Why? Because I, I resigned for reasons that I believe in. And um, I think, I, I feel like that um, I, I have an opportunity and obligation as a, as a physician to tell the truth and to, to remain um, transparent and accountable, much like I said, as I took the job. For a long time, the prevailing wisdom has been that people need to be cross-trained to fight fires and provide medical services, especially given the fact that most of the calls that go to 9-11 are for medical emergencies. You feel medical services should be separated. Why? I use the analogy of the triathlon, swim, bike, and run. You do one of them generally better than the other, and you, but you can't swim and, and bike at the same time. So what I said was that there needed to be a, uh, a laser-like focus on the provision of emergency care. There seems to have been a philosophical difference between you and the fire chief, Gregory Dean. I had a conversation with him this morning about that. And that philosophical difference, is said, he said, is because you believe in a what he calls a third service system. Do you know what that means? I do know what that means. Can you please explain? So a third service means that EMS would be uh, alongside police and fire as a separate service. It just has to have its own line of authority. It has to have its own infrastructure. And it has to be uniquely focused and driven by science and medicines. The service that we have here is called a fire first service or what's to that effect? Not fire first, fire department driven service. Um, it's a fire-based service. It's a fire-based service, and that was the system that you signed on to participate in. Yes, sir. Why are you then now leaving the system? Because you give the impression that this was not the kind of system you were expecting. The reason I'm leaving is that because the culture that exists in this particular... Oh, we're going to get to that. The, the yeah, culture that exists in this particular system is... Um, is rife with resistance to change and change from the top down. So I, my resignation was based on a number of things that occurred over seven months. But you knew going in that this was a system that required reform, that was a system that required change. It's one of the things you signed on to do. Are you saying that you were resisted, that you were blocked in your efforts to bring that change? That's what I'm saying. I'm saying even basic things like answering a radio and being accountable for returning back to service. Um, very, very basic things, deployment decisions, how we send apparatus and response plans of, of how we respond to certain calls. You re respond to low-level calls in a different way than you respond to high-level calls. In fact, I had written a, a deployment plan within months of that would have alleviated a what lot of this. What happened to that deployment plan? I mean, again, this was just, this was not the vision. You say that this 30-party provider is like putting a Band-Aid on a gushing artery. Why do you feel that way? So the plan was to send a fire apparatus to every call, low level and high level, to do an assessment. And then the providers would make a decision about whether it was a basic life support call and an AL or an advanced life support call. And all I'm saying is that we have to first be able to discern advanced life support from basic life support within our own house. And that requires um, training and education, but 
more importantly, it required that I was able to at least do a baseline assessment so that I could guide that training, which I tried to do very early on, and, and that was um, the way I wanted to do it was not acceptable. You mentioned the culture that permeates this department, a culture in which, the way you characterize it, people disappear into hospitals and can't be contacted again, a culture in which there is a lack of accountability. What did you find as medical director that you could not do because of that culture? I was unable to hold them accountable. It was unbelievable to me coming from where I come from and having been an EMT and a paramedic since I was 19 that it would be acceptable to not answer your radio and to have two people that sit in a communication center whose entire job is to try to find you all day so that we can send somebody on the next call. What, did this, what about the chief's relationship with the union? Do you feel that it affects the competence of the department? Your letter indicated that at first, the chief seemed to want to go along with you in terms of the assessments that you wanted made, but after the union said that it wasn't comfortable with that, that somehow or the other, the chief's mind changed. You know, Kojo, I really would love to not make this about the union. Uh, there is so much that goes on. We spend an inordinate amount of time talking about the different union issues on a daily basis. This is about patient care, a system that high-functioning providers can, can work in. So I don't want to make this about the union because it's not about the union. Okay, then here is Cindy in Washington, D.C. Cindy, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Hi, Kojo, and hi, Dr. Saucy. I wanted to come on today to first thank you for having Dr. Saucy on, and thank you, Dr. Saucy, for your courageous efforts on behalf of our community. Um, this has been a chronic condition with uh, DC Fire and EMS for over 20 years. We've gone through 12 medical directors, two of which have served in uh, terms twice. That in itself says a great deal about this being a systemic issue that we're looking at okay. and that the focus is not patient care. Okay, thank you very much for your call. I wanted to get this call in because the caller identifies as Dr. Terry Jodry, who is the medical director for the PG County EMS department. Terry Jodry, you are on the air. Go ahead, please. Yeah, good afternoon, Kojo. Good afternoon, Juliet. Good to talk to you. Uh, I, I just wanted to essentially point out that there is a real problem when medical accountability is such that a medical director reports to a fire chief. Um, it, it, think of the equivalent set of circumstances where a doctor or a, a firefighter were to report to a medical doctor regarding how to fight fires. I mean, there they, they, they sit together well. We don't have a lot of time, but you seem to have touched on a fundamental issue that I'd like Dr. Saucy to address, because Dr. Saucy, what you say is that despite being the medical director, you did not have the authority to make changes yourself. You had to go to the head of the department who is essentially, or trained essentially in firefighting. Right. Um, I think um, Dr. Jodry makes a really good point. Um, it, it is difficult um, for a, a medical person, a medical director, to report directly to a fire chief. Um, we have two very different functions, two very different focuses, and, um, uh, you know, it's often met with resistance. And, and in this case, it was met with very high-level resistance. Ambulance Paramedics. Saving lives in our communities.